Being on the front lines in the fight to educate the next generation is tough. The goal of this podcast is to provide you with important updates, encouragement, and connection. Welcome to the Institute Leaders Lifeline. Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Institute Leaders Lifeline. My name is Mike Sinclair, and I'm Deputy Superintendent of School Support at the Charter Institute at Erskine. And as usual, I am so glad that you're with us. Today, we're going to have the final episode in our series on leading with passion. And we've gone through some great uh, interviews during this series. We've talked a little bit about um, communication and setting expectations and knowing what your uh, vision is, a very clear, succinct uh, way to present your vision to people. Uh, and so today I'm going to leave you with a little nugget at the end about how to develop some of those behaviors. Uh, it's from a book that I just read. Some of the ideas are from that. So stick around to the end because it's not going to be your typical uh, subject matter for a book. We typically talk about leadership books. This one's a little bit different. So stick around to the end. And I think that it might be something that uh, you would want to get uh, a copy of or listen to some excerpts from. So I'll get to that. Before we get into it, though, I just want to kind of revisit a couple weeks ago. Uh, if you are a principal or on a leadership team uh, for one of the schools in the Charter Institute at Erskine, you are all gathered together with us here in Columbia for our school leaders meeting. And I really want to thank two people uh, that kicked it off for us. One is Miss Ainsley Crow. Uh, she is a 15-year-old student at one of our virtual schools, Cyber Academy. Uh, she was actually my guest in episode 12. If you haven't heard episode 12 with Ainsley, go back and check that out. She actually is a 15-year-old student taking dual credit classes at Greenville Technical College in Greenville, South Carolina. And she has a great story. She is a young woman with a vision of what she wants to accomplish, and she's got the drive to get there. So if you want some inspiration on what uh, our youth are capable of and what they're interested in and what we can really uh, maybe instill and build in them, she's a great story to listen to. Uh, sometimes we can get caught up in all the stories and things you read and the things you see where it's, oh, woe is me. Ainsley Crow is an example of something that you can really build your school and build your uh, vision around but as a goal for your students. Uh, the other person I'd like to thank is the person that Ainsley introduced, Superintendent Ellen Weaver, our new South Carolina Superintendent of Education. And Superintendent Weaver was with us with some great words of inspiration, a vision for what she sees uh, education like in our state going over the next four years of her term and even in the future potentially. Uh, and so we wanted to publicly thank her for joining us with her busy schedule. She's brand new in the role and really building um, up her expectation. I've already seen on their social media, she's been at several schools since then. So she carved out that morning to be with us and that is much appreciated. And as leaders, I hope that uh, we always appreciate the time that those that impact us spend in sharing uh, their ideas and their vision and their words with us. So thank you, Superintendent Weaver, for being with us. Now let's jump into this episode. We've had three fantastic guests in this series. Uh, that started right after our winter holidays when we got back. First, we started with Representative Shannon Erickson. She's the chair, chairman of the House Education and Public Works Committee. And she shared uh, kind of how she got into education, uh, where she's been a lot in preschool um, down in the lower part of the state, and some of the vision she has for her work as the new chairman of that committee. And we are thankful for her partnering with us. Then we had Senator Greg Hembry, the chairman of the Senate Education Committee. And Senator Hembry shared his vision and also some stories and some people that really influenced him, a teacher that really poured into him. So both of those are fantastic interviews if you want to go back and check those out. In our last week's interview, it was Dr. Michael Gordon Smith, the new founding principal of a school here in the middle part of the state in Lexington, American Leadership Academy. Uh, and it will be opening this August of 2023. Uh, they have just far exceeded um, enrollment projections and they are right around that 2000 student mark, which is almost unheard of, of a brand new brick and mortar school in the state of South Carolina. But one thing I loved about his interview is he didn't really expound on it a lot, but he, he did drop the, 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 the key part in his motivation and changing lives and kind of his a change in career paths was um, a tragedy that occurred uh, in his young adulthood. And he did not use that as a determinant, de determining factor, uh, 
uh, labeling who he would be as an individual, he used it as a chance to redirect some of his focus and his career path, and he's never looked back. And he is changing lives in his schools, in his community, um, just in remarkable ways. So I promise you, go back to last episode and check that out in his interview and kind of find out what is that catalyst if you haven't listened to it. Great story. Not going to give it away here because he tells it so much better than I could summarize it here. Today, I want to look at kind of what, um, what those individuals did for just a minute. They did not let uh, circumstances define who they were. They had a vision. They wanted to impact people. They wanted to uh, build on uh, struggles they had. They all talked about maybe some difficulties in school or, or like I said with Dr. Gordon Smith, some, some things that had happened in his life. And he really used those or these three individuals used those to catapult their influence. So as you're sitting there as a leader, um, you could probably think about some some people or some events in your past that used uh, that, that you could use to motivate yourself going forward. And so you didn't let yourself get defined by those moments. So today I also want to revisit from a prior episode where we talked about can you communicate with those you lead and those you impact clearly what your passion is. Um, it's important that you can clearly communicate that because once you talk about it, you are able to then hear yourself and how you communicated. So if you start rambling, this is kind of the crux of what I was trying to explain. If you start rambling when you communicate your vision and your passion for your organization, then you really don't know what your core is. Um, I was at a conference uh, earlier this week and they were talking about um, asking schools, what's your model? What what model do you have? And, 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 and so often they get in and talk about details like the, my schedule or the students or the program. And, and, and they said the importance is to back out and think about your model, your whole concept. And so as you're communicating that as a leader, do you really know what your model is? Do you know what your culture is? How do you communicate that to those that you lead and those that you impact? Um, don't guess that they know what those things are. And as you communicate it, always start refining. You will hear about the elevator pitch. So what's your elevator pitch? What fits on your little tiny index card that you have it succinctly um, down so that you don't have to worry about what the person interprets, you know what you're saying. And that is critical in your communication. Then I wanna get into a little reminder about your actions. Remember that those that you're leading, they're trying to interpret what you're saying and what you're doing. So are what are, are your actions or the things you're doing, are they modeling what your vision is for your organization? You know, it can't be the do as I say, not as I do. You've got to have parallel actions and your words. They have to be aligned. So are you able to slow down and align those in what you do to communicate your passion and your vision. Because if you're driven and you're going out and doing great things and you are giving 110% at all the time, but you have a disconnect in how and what you're communicating to those that you lead, that's gonna cause frustration. That's gonna cause that disconnect. And if you have a disconnect with those that are following you, then you're not going to be effective and burnout can set in quickly for you and for those that you're leading. You have to have that congruency. So know your passion, communicate your passion with your words, communicate your passion and your vision with your actions so that there's alignment and there's not a disconnect. You will be more efficient, more effective, and your buy-in will be exponentially more. Now, today, I do wanna talk about some quotes from a book called Depression Hates a Moving Target. It's a book by Nita Sweeney. I was listening to a podcast and, and, and I'll be honest and I've shared it here. Uh, I enjoy running and I was listening to a podcast uh, about running and the host interviewed Nita Sweeney. And she is uh, started running when she, getting back into running when she was 60 years old. And she really kind of got into it reluctantly. Um, to be honest with you, she just didn't think she could do it anymore. And she was um, dealing with some mental health issues and some general health issues. And so someone told her, just run for 60 seconds. If you start there, 
see where it goes. And, and that's really how it started. And now she runs ultras, which are more than the a marathon, um, longer races longer than a marathon. And it really kind of inspired me like, okay, so what, what's her story getting in there? So it's, a, it's her book, Depression Hates a Moving Target. So if you want to check it out, Nita Sweeney, it's a good book. Um, it's on Audible if you want to listen to the um, audio book as well. Here's a quote that really stood out to me. And I'm, I'm going to tie the two in, so stay with me. She said, in, in, in one of the chapters, she says, Don't be afraid to make mistakes or look foolish. Suit up, show up, stay in the present. Now I'm going to break that into pieces. Don't be afraid to make mistakes or look foolish, part one. Suit up and show up, part two. Stay in the present, part three. So let's go back to the beginning. With the don't be afraid to make mistakes or look foolish. As the leader, and you know your passions, let's go back to the idea of what you say and what you do have to be in alignment. And sometimes uh, when we're faced with uh, situations, sometimes we start overanalyzing what we know we need to do. And we're like, oh, God, but how are they going to take that? Or what are they going to think about uh, me after this situation? And, and what I'm going to tell you is you just got to do it. You just got to get out there. You've got to do what you know you need to do, even if you think they may think you're silly or they uh, may not take it as seriously. So how do you communicate that? Just get out there and do it. So the next is suit up and show up. So that's it. You can't lay in bed in the morning and overanalyze what's going on. You can't get stuck in your office chair and overanalyze the what ifs. My example um, in this actually comes from running. If, if, if my brain controlled what I did, I would never go out and take the first step when I run because I'm often processing, do I have on too many clothes? Am I gonna get too hot? And if I get too hot, then I'll get dehydrated because I'll sweat too much. And if I get dehydrated and sweat too much, then I might be three miles in this run and get stuck. And then I gotta walk back home and, and then, then, then it's gonna take me twice as long. And then I'm not, and all of these things come through my mind. Suit up and show up. Just do it. Just get out there and start it and stay in the present. Stop worrying about what's around that corner. Stop worrying about the unknown. Our, our minds will start anticipating problems and conflicts and dreaming up all of the obstacles. Now, we've talked about in prior episodes, it's important to um, be proactive and anticipate things. But when you dwell on those things and they become paralyzing, then you're not staying in the present. So when you're with your staff, when you're with those that you interact with, stay in the present. Operate in the here and now with what you know and you go forward the best you can. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Suit up and show up and get in the work and do what you're supposed to do and do what you know is needed and stay in the present. Don't let your mind get way off on a bunch of what ifs. The next thing, the next quote, the second one, the final one I'm going to share with you says, this is when she's talking about, Nita Sweeney in her book is talking about her struggle with certain um, fears she had. And so there's this walking, suspended walking bridge, and she gets really nervous going over it because she's worried about all the things that could happen when she's over this bridge, going over this bridge. And she says, I wound my way back. So she's off on this run. I wound my way back to the walking bridge, which I intended to master. I'd desensitized myself by repeating frightening things in small doses. As they became more familiar, they are less terrifying. That quote stands out to me because sometimes what we're afraid of, what we're anxious about, what we're nervous about, the obstacle that stands between our vision and the execution of it or the action paralyzes us. And what this quote tells me is you have to take it in small doses and you do the things that make you anxious. You do the things that make you fearful. You stand up in front of the group. You make the phone call to the parent that you know is very upset and, and you just don't wanna make that call. But you have to make yourself make that call. You've got the difficult um, staff member. You don't wanna face it, it's uncomfortable, but you have to have that meeting. You have to do it 
because eventually it'll slightly desensitize yourself. And over time, it's not fun, but it becomes more comfortable to have those tough conversations, to do the things that at one point caused you to be anxious and fearful and frozen. You jump into it and you do it. So if you're a new leader or you're starting a new school, standing up in front of the group, making those phone calls, having those hard meetings, all of those things are going to be overwhelming, are gonna cause anxiousness. And that's healthy. It keeps you humble. It makes you think. It keeps you sharp. It's not something you need to say, I can't do this job because it makes me anxious. What you do is you consciously, like the prior one, you suit up, you show up, you stay in the moment, and you do it. And over time, by doing those things in small doses, you become desensitized to it, and they're less terrifying. Two quotes totally interwoven into you as a new leader, or you starting something new, or you facing these uh, anxious, in, uh, anxiety-inducing situations, and they come from a book about running from a lady that was older in her life and going back and doing it. They're not coming from the leadership. So you never know where those nuggets are. You never know where the encouragement is. Read lots of things. We've talked about that in prior episodes. Get out there and read things that build your capacity, that make you creative, that encourage you. You don't have to get set in, this is what people tell me to read. Fill yourself with productive things. Fill yourself with inspiring things because you never know where that last nugget's gonna be that's gonna put you into brand new leadership opportunities. Check it out, Depression Hates a Moving Target by Nita Sweeney. I hope you've enjoyed this series on leading with passion. I would love to have your feedback on where you want the podcast to go with new um, topics, new uh, inter people to interview. You really drive the content we have here and the way that we design supports at the Institute. But most importantly, take care of yourself and take care of your team. Have a great day. Be sure to follow the Institute on all of our social media platforms Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Erskine Charters. We'll have all of these resources, including this podcast, many stories of our schools and other things. So check us out. The opinions expressed within the content are solely the authors and do not reflect the opinions and beliefs of the Charter Institute at Erskine or its affiliates.